What's up guys, Jimmo back in the house painting this Mercedes. We're gonna just spot in the corner here. And uh, this booth is in Kingston, Ontario. You know how I like to roll, just wandering the streets of Kingston. And uh, somebody left the shop door open. I walked in and saw this Mercedes and said, hey, you mind if I paint this? And they were like, yeah, man, just, just give her. So that's what we're doing. Um, I get my first coat of paint over this primer. It was a, a little scratch there that we repaired. And uh, you can see this color covers extremely well. So sometimes you get blues, they're a little transparent. And it uh, usually results in larger blends because each coat you're gonna have to step out a little further unless you have the perfect ground coat um, You know, there's some uh, Some other things to talk about I guess but um, I don't want to overcomplicate things Let's just say this blue hides really well, and it's uh, it's gonna work in our favor here Ideally we want to try and keep that color away from where it's gonna match up to the top of the bumper or the fender on the driver side because uh, if you know if we don't have a good color match then uh, it can be become visible there and uh, I was made aware of a burn through in the prep work at the far corner there far edge of the hood which is another pretty common thing you see in a lot of shops uh, you know the prepper will come up to you and then mention that uh, there's a, a flaw in the prep work and we need you to correct it so that's not a big deal. We, we're going to fix that up. It could be worse. Sometimes those, those blends ha or those burn throughs happen at the edge of a blend panel, and then you have to go into the next blend panel. So this one's pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. So what uh, I'm working to do with this blend is I'm going to keep it small, and um, I'm going to watch my arc. I'm going to try to uh, make a better habit of my blends of of lessening the arc on the wrist and uh, just fading out the blend more using the trigger by, by I guess kind of letting up on the trigger I face a fair amount of criticism on that with uh, the blending technique it's just I mean it's YouTube it is what it is uh, you get people mad for posting a video of their cat uh, eating food it's just the nature of the beast I guess um, so anyway, <laughs> there's, there's some fair criticism on some of the earlier videos and, um, you know, everybody's always learning today is a new day and, and, uh, we're going to try and improve our blend technique every day until it's perfect. So we're just going to, um, yeah, we're going to get coverage on this and then we're going to put an effect coat. Now silvers can be a little trickier, especially across hoods, blending them just the way that the metallics tend to lie. It's, a um, You've got, I guess, gravity working a little differently against you on the hoods with the metallics, the way they're going to stand up. Uh, blending could have been a little bit easier using an orientation coat, so like a wet bed. Um, so you'd be blending into a wet surface, but typically I don't feel like I need them, especially on colors like this. This color is generally going to be pretty easy to blend out. And we're going to see the results, and if I'm correct, in just a few minutes. Okay, so now that I have coverage, we're just going to give this little tack off. So I'll run my handy dandy tack rag over the entire thing. And um, this is one of those things some people like to do and some people don't. I like to tack off pretty frequently. And there's a lot of um, things that I would like to do on every job. I'd also like to have the anti static gun for every job. And uh, I don't have that on this one at this shop but there's a lot of shops that have that anti-static gun and uh, used it on the Lincoln Continental very cool little device and it results in some clean clean paint paintwork so this is my um, Tecna Clearco gun this is the second time that I've had a chance to use it and uh, you can see like it just hammers it on so wet it just just jumps out of the gun and onto the panel and uh, I'm liking this gun more and more every chance I get to spray it, so um, it's cool. And it's also, I was using a new clear, so sometimes it's hard to gauge a gun when I've never used the clear before. It's, I guess every day is kind of like an adventure. There's always something new, and uh, that's what I kind of like about the whole tech rep gig in general. Always going to different shops and uh, seeing different ways of doing things, having different products, different equipment, different spraying conditions. I mean, every filtration system, every airline. And sometimes it's cool just to jump into somebody's paint booth 
and spray a job and then you know you sometimes observe things that they may not have known they they were struggling with but we could probably have a pretty good reality show of uh the life in a tech rap a lot of a lot of interesting stories that's for sure and a lot of driving so you, you if you're ever contemplating making that move from the floor to the road a lot a lot of driving especially if your territory happens to be ontario which is massive i mean i think just to drive across it, it it's like 22 hours 28 hours it's, it's a long time i think i could drive to florida before i could drive to the top of um ontario so uh, that's just something to keep in mind and I did recently just travel up to see my buddy Gabe from Motivated Painters, and uh, I got his precious Matco gun, the base co gun he was talking about, and uh, I'm going to get to try it for myself pretty soon. So I'm excited to see how that goes. The other guns I have to uh, work with are the Segolas and my Walcoms, um, and I guess we got this nice Techno Clear gun. So uh, lots of guns. Oh, the Fuji spray, too. I got a Fuji spray. It's uh, on Instagram. You can check that out too. But um, again, this uh, this Techna gun's moving up the ranks quickly, and we'll we'll have to just see how this plays out. Uh, here's the finish. Here looks like we've got a nice gloss going on. And once we unmask that, let me just see where we are. Oh, it's gonna happen pretty soon. We're gonna switch. We're gonna switch. Boom. There it is. I'm pretty happy with the color match that we've got here. And like I say, that's, um, there's a few ways that this could be handled if the color was not dialed into the way you want it. I mean, you could look at bringing it into the top of the bumper and that other fender. It would have multiplied the size of this spray job significantly. Um, but sometimes you have to do that if the, the color is right out to lunch. Or, I mean, you, you could spend that time tinting the color if you're better at tinting. But usually it's a quicker and safer bet to blend in every direction should you need to do that and in most cases you do need to blend so just you know just throwing that out there and before I let you go I can, can actually walk into the other booth here where my buddy Lee was spraying and um, you know this is a case where he's taken that color into the fender so we've blended the, we've blended the fenders for the sake of the color match on that front bumper and that's just you know it's uh, sometimes necessary I'm sure there's some people out there that would be arguing it is necessary every time and I mean if you want that perfect worry-free color match then absolutely but I guess the reality in most shops you know it's uh, it sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't um, you know most with bumper jobs especially and uh, hoods to some degree it's um, you know they try and dial in the color rather than blend everything out but uh, when it comes to doors fenders um, pretty well every time they elect to blend so uh, some food for thought. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And um, that's it. So thanks as always for watching. Check out ways you can support the channel in the description. And follow us on all of the social media platforms. And I will love you forever. So thank you again. And we will see you next time.